for an update and changes. Yet, yeah, as you know, if you've been following the channel for quite some time, especially over the life of the old layout, I like to make changes before I finished other areas. I, I've always been known for that, and I know it's quite a pain even, I think it's a pain doing it myself. But I've been looking at areas on this layout already, only after two years and thinking, nah, I don't like that anymore, and it needs a change. So in today's video, we are going to have a look at those changes and a new loco. And then at the end, we will show you that uh, new loco running around the Heritage Railway. So let's have a look at some of the changes that I've done and will be doing. Right then, as usual, I am now doing this freehand so it won't be as stable as before. So here we are then at Clifton High Bridge Station. As you know, this area is been done for a while. Now this is not changing. I like this area and it's a little bit lower than the main level and then it splits off and goes into two uh, storage lines that way. And if we just uh, spin around this way, nothing is going to change here. I like this. You've probably already spotted the change too before. And I have put some figures on and you can see he's at the ticket machine. As long as he actually buys a ticket not tries to jump on the train with that one, he's going to get in some trouble for that. Now, this used to be a four-platform station. Well, not anymore. Now, the other two platforms used to be there and there. Now, I just wasn't happy with those platforms there. I wanted this side of the layout to be open countryside. And that's exactly what's going here instead. I have made a little start. That's just a rough sort of... I was trying to get some ideas there. And if we go this way... Now these will be the abutment walls for the uh, suspension bridge here, uh, just to blend into this back scene a lot more. I am going to do a video to show you how I do that. I have got um, brick, uh, she no, brick or is it stone? No, I think it's stone. Stone sheets to go all over that and it's got to be a tunnel entrance. And I will show you how I do that uh, in an up and coming video. Now, as you can see, the narrow gauge line is here, 009, and there is a gap. In this area, I'm going to put low-lying, sort of uneven scenery, and then put some, again, low-lying trees and bushes and plants. Because if we come down at this level, watching the double fairly, as I, you know I've got coming along here, with that scenery, rather than the platform, it's just going to look so much nicer during filming, I think, anyway. And then there'll be a tunnel entrance about here in this area, and then the 009 will go around there. Excuse those wagons, um, they're just sort of chilling out by there, I guess. So let me know what you think in that area. I think it'll look much better. I have just ordered uh, train tech signals, uh, cable trunking, and the orange cable things that go underneath the track. I've bought that, and there will be a fence, obviously, running the entire way down there. So let me know your thoughts on that little bit. Let's go to the next one. So we're here at the shed area now, and you're probably thinking, what on earth am I going to do here? Well, believe it or not, it's not big enough. I know Jubilee Road is a really large layout, and I'm lucky to have a layout this big, but after my visit to Eastleigh, this shed area is just not big enough. I want more space to do some shunting with an 08 and locos moving back and forth and I stood here for quite a few hours over the last few days how on earth do I do this so my idea what I've come up with this is a bit mad but luckily I don't have to mess about with the scenery I've already done so if we move back this way we've got this not the paintbrush that's not gonna help one bit I am gonna put a point not this because this is a horrible train set point and I really don't really like using them. That is going to sit around there. Now obviously I'm going to have to ease that down into this area. And that line will come across here, over there and into a board which is going to sit in there. Now this will move over here to that angle. We'll have a nice shed area and I reckon I can get another three lines in there. And the board is here it's in exactly the same size as the one that's sitting there the actually attic floorboards 
Now these are fantastic to use because they're extremely solid and really well uh, done. You can see it's pretty long and that will fit perfectly in that gap. Now, one drawback, I am actually going to have to crawl underneath to get to that area in there. Now, does that bother me? No, not, no, it really doesn't, that's fine by me. I'm still able to go around crawling and I quite often do it under there, which is not a really fun job, but anyway. So that is the changes I do want to make. I just want a much bigger shed area and I do have my eye on a shed building that can sit on that edge there. So that is the changes, please let me know. Um, it, always good to hear from you, your thoughts. I know it really helps, It honestly it really does. So let's go and have a look now at this new locomotive I've got. And here it is, the newest member to Jubilee Road. Now, yeah, you probably know exactly what this is. This is a Hornby Terrier, one of the newer releases. I was never actually planning on buying a Terrier. I was, didn't really want one for the layout, but I went to the Isle of Wight recently and visited upstairs, downstairs in Sandown on the Isle of Wight. Highly recommend visiting if you're in the area. And I thought, I need an Isle of Wight loco, seems I'm here, don't I? And this is what I bought, a Terrier. Now, I could have bought an O2, but I already have one. So if we just look at this, I really don't didn't know what to expect with a Hornby Terrier, but all I can say is, what a fab little locomotive this really is. Hornby have done a really nice job on this. It's great detail, and the loco feels quality, and there's a bit of metal going on in the construction of this too. And just look at the finish. I got number 13, as you can see there with the British Rail Sunshine lettering, as they call it. It is just such a lovely, lovely little model. And it runs well, too. So this is definitely up there with Horn one of Hornby's better locomotives that they've done in recent years. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. This is better than the Hush Hush loco I just looked at. This is better quality and better detailed, in my opinion. Oh, dear. That's not good, is it? A Terrier better than a Hush Hush? But, sorry guys, it just is. So yeah, that's what I bought. I paid about 94 for it, brand new from upstairs, downstairs. I, to be honest, I think that's a good uh, price, because, as you can see, if I go in a bit closer, I know those couplings are a bit horrid, but we can sort that out. Let's go a bit closer for you. Yeah, really quite impressed. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave comments down below so I can uh, hear from you about the changes and let me know, do you have one of these Terriers and what do you think about it? Now I'm going to leave you with a few shots of this Terrier running around the Heritage Railway with a mixed freight train. I'll be back here at Jubilee Road with loads more railway content for you. Bye everyone.